What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, what could it be that's hiding in here for me? What's in the box? What's in the box? Is this a model kit or what's in here for me? What's in the box? What's in the box? How hard is it to put together? Is it made of leather? Hey, what's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today's episode of What's in the Box was filmed right here at Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of What's in the Box. And this time we have the AMT 3-in-1 1925 Ford Model T kit. Now if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that this is the same Model T as the Laurel and Hardy. But here they show you all these different cool options you can do. So you can do three different versions of a stock car. Actually, you can do four. Uh, but it's kind of a trick. A um, turtle back roadster, turtle deck roadster with the top up or the top down. That counts as two options. <laughs> I know it's kind of cheaty, but there's a pickup truck with the top up or the top or top up or top down and then the rest is all hot rods and there is a lot of common combinations of how you can build your hot rods you see more than 11 variations now this is a uh, re-release of the old trophy series kit you can always tell a re-release because somewhere there's a barcode on it um, but there's all the parts you get in it now the trophy series are from the 1960s so this tells you the vintage of the kit. Um, a lot of them had uh, George Barris as an influence. But you see you get more than 140 parts. And you can actually build two complete cars out of this kit. So let's crack the box open and see what she looks like. Now I have a confession to make. I was actually starting to work on this car before uh, uh, doing this video. So a lot of the parts are cut off the parts tree. But they give you a reprint of the original Trophy Series instructions. And they show you the different versions. You can even crumple up the hood to make it look like it's open. Um, although, once you do that, you can't actually close the hood. It's forever crumpled up. They give you a nice little history of the Model T. And it's uh, like uh, dimensions and engine specifications, that sort of thing. And then you got your engine building instructions. This shows the both Model T engine and then the Lincoln for street and competition. Then it tells you this nice thing about customizing throughout the ages, how they started with medieval suits and Romans and the prehistoric man decorating things. And, and then it gets into the Model T and then uh, pinup girls of World War II and all kinds of stuff. Then here's the uh, hints and tips for making a Model T stand out. There's the crumpled up hood. You can also chop the windshield down for your street rod. Then it shows you different versions of the kit along the side. Of course it shows you some of the other AMT kits. This is a newer addition to the original instructions. And then big fold out there's the Model T, the original going together. It's kind of just a big exploded view. And then when they get into the hot rod, they break it down a little. So it also included in the kit is this chop top coupe, which is pretty cool. You could add it to the stock version and have like the world's first chop top, <laughs> which yeah, a 1925 Model T with a top chop, first customizing. No, I don't know. Actually, they customized the Model T back then differently. They removed the entire body and they put on race car bodies. Anyway, and then there's the other option. You can build the uh, bucket roadster with a little pickup truck back end. And the thing about the Model T is they show the turtle deck or you could build the uh, pickup truck, depending on how you want to build it or how many of these you have that you want to change. Now this kit is, I don't think it's currently available anymore through AMT, 
but they're bringing out the Three Stooges um, pickup truck, which is ex this kit exactly, except that kit also includes the unchopped version of this body in it. I looked it up online. But at any rate, if you're a Model T fan, or doing a rest or, or um, a project, which is what I'm doing with these Model Ts, that's why I'm showing all these Model T videos. It's a project for the museum that I want to do. There's a Model T engine. Nice and white and glary. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a mo um, I want to do a, a diorama type model with Cars of the 20s in it for when we do silent movie nights at the Museum of the Highwood in High River. And I've got stuff like the Laurel and Hardy Model T and all that, which I want to uh, to show. Here's something to look at while I'm talking. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take these parts out of the box and put them on the bench, and then we'll have a quick look at that. Okay, so I found myself a pointer rod. So let's take a look at the parts here on the stock version. So here we have here we have the radiator and the hood. Then we got the fenders here, the windshield, the top up. This is molded as one piece, so you don't have to glue the two together. Then I got the body, and there's a dashboard, and I glued the uh, firewall in there. And then I got the seat, and you see these little green dots there? That's, um, I filled the sink holes in the kit. Here's the pickup bed with the tailgate glued on. Then there's your turtle deck and your convertible top as folded down. Then we've got our tires, or our spare tire and our four wheels. The tires for that are in a bag. I haven't done them yet. There's the top of the seat that goes on top of the gas tank there. The rear axle, the frame, I built the whole engine. There's the front axle glued onto the frame. And that is your um, control arms for steering. And the support brace arms. Your steering column, your headlights, your steering wheel. And the rear spring. And then over here, there's your license plates for the uh, stock and street rod ver <laughs> version of the kit. Now there's something I want to show you guys with the frame. And this is sort of the trick with the Model T's. Uh, so let me just get this ready here. So, something I wanted to show you guys on building your Model T's that's always been a problem with these Model T kits. It, there isn't really much you can do about this problem, but you can try to do your best with this problem. Okay, so you got the frame. Now when you glue your front axle in, that's not too bad, because there's some alignment... There's a hole there, and there's some alignment bits. And they give you these two little... little whiskers there that stick up. That is to locate, when you got your engine together, this front bit here. Because it'll glue just in front of it. And there's two little posts here that the uh, engine goes into on the frame. And there always seems to be a problem with the alignment of the exhaust man manifold and the actual exhaust pipe. But at any rate... Okay, see, the little whisker notches there are for the crank which would come right through the engine and then drop off there. So that's a good reference point there. And usually, like with when I'm doing restoration model tees, the front axle is usually on pretty straight. Now the problem with the back axle... Now it says in the instructions, you'll notice here, if this could focus properly, there's a flat notch sort of in the spring. Now, according to the instructions, that goes toward the back. Like that. Um, now what the problem is, because this is half round here, and the, the hole is half round, 
people have tendencies to glue axles in crooked like that. Now what I would suggest is you need the addition of extra parts. First off, you would need to glue your engine in, into the front, and you also need to glue your tie rod ends and that sort of thing. And they glue to this peg right there. Uh, yeah, like this. So the back bit mounted to the engine. And then the front part of these, there's two little bumps right there and there. That's where the front bits go on. So when this is in the frame, Okay, this will all be lined up. You know, sort of like that, right? Can't really see with my thumbs in the way. Okay, so you lock the front engine down. Because if you notice on the rear axle, there's that bump right there, or that pin, and then the grooves. The grooves are gonna be facing up, like this way. That pin goes into the back of the engine. Now, when you got your spring in here, you, uh, I'd glue all this together with the glue wet so that you can move it, sort of however you need to move this to get it to line up. And the other part of this is take your fenders, I filled in these spots here, sink marks. You want to get your frame on your fenders as well while you're gluing that rear spring into place. And even the best thing is take your wheels with your axles, slip them in here, because if any glue gets on there, it's touching a metal axle and it's very easy. Uh, the glue will not stick on there. Oh, yeah, one thing. This little hub here, sorry, is your front wheel. The back wheel has this bigger double hub because the brakes were in the back. So you want to find which one has a bigger hub. Slip her into your axle here. Okay. Then you got your your frame into the body. That part doesn't have to be glued yet, but just as a positioning thing. We're going to pretend the engine block is in. And then you're going to slip your axle up with the wheels on. <laughs> it's easier if there's glue on there. The notch is supposed to be at the back, right? Okay. So, you glue in that in like that. And then with the wheels in place, uh, you can see, use that to level it. So you're not like this but you're like where it's supposed to be level. And then of course with the glue wet you could even, well, turn it upside down, put it like that on the table, just so you know where it is. But anyway, that's my thoughts. And then there's another thing that uh, people wonder about, and that is that when the Model T is together, And this thing is sprung in where it's supposed to be. Sometimes the wheel will look like this up at the front, like it's almost touching that front arc of the fender. That's not an AMT mistake. If you look at the side view of a Model T, you'll actually see that it does have just enough room in that spot basically to put your fingers in right at that place. It It's something that Henry Ford did because the reasoning is 
you know, your wheel is going up and down like this when you hit a bump. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to hold and watch. It's going like this when you hit a bump. So it doesn't need to do anything other than just go straight up and down. Whereas the front wheels you'll find are always out like how they're supposed to look. Because the front wheels have to turn like that and that. But back here you're only going straight up and down. So if you got a Model T and it's very close to the front, then you've done it right. Whereas if your Model T looks like this in the back, then you're wrong. <laughs> so. Okay, now I want to show you the second part of this kit, which is the hot rod version. Now this is interesting because there's a chrome tree in the back. And now every chrome piece in there, I don't think there's any exceptions actually, are all for the hot rod. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Um, now looking at this part tree, you can see they restored the original wheels. Now I had a kit from the 80s and it had the Krager 5 spokes instead of the uh, reverse chrome rims. So it's nice to see the originals come back. It's got the dropped axle with the chrome front spring and the chrome rear spring. The dashboard chrome, a roll cage, the engine parts and the custom mirror, uh, headlights, some spotlights, big exhaust pipes, chrome gas tank, valve covers for the um, uh, Lincoln motor, the long brakes with the spindles, the shorter grill shell, the uh, chrome oil pan, chrome gear sticks, not gear sticks, pedals. <laughs> There's the transmission, the uh, rear axle. Okay, and then you get this chopped top body, which is nice. And this is the undercarriage. That's a floor pan that the chopped body sits on. Like so. You get the Motorcycle style fenders you can put on, the shortened pickup bed, and a Z section frame to drop it in the back. And now you can actually build the um, Sportster, Sport Roadster, as a hot rod instead if you don't want to use that body. And that was the coupe body that I showed on the for the antique car. This part just drops in. Then you got your hot rod firewall, the smoothie with your uh, power brakes on it. The fan for the engine. And there's your rest of the parts. So you got your T-Bird engine or your, yeah, I think it's a Thunderbird. Or the Lincoln, sorry, Lincoln motor. The big intakes. <laughs> or the... Uh, I can't remember my automotive's talk anymore. There's your radiator, your carburetors. This is for the um, fuel injecting thing. There's the old cool steering wheel. The deep dish. There's your instrument panel for that chrome insert in the vintage style racing bucket seats. And these are your rear axle coming up from that uh, two-speed differential. Now here's an interesting thing. There's your stock fenders. You can actually put the chopped body on top of your stock fenders. So you could build a, the first chopped top you could build the historic Model T with the first chop top <laughs> if you want to do something like that. Or you could actually, well, I don't think the Z frame fits in here, but you could actually use the vintage fenders and make your own kind of hot rod with the regular frame. Might take a bit of work. Now what I didn't get to show here, there's the stock tires in the bag. And then, I don't know if you can see through the paper there. But these tires have printed white walls on them, which are really cool. And then the other thing AMT has done, they've given you this red glass 
you can put in there. Red glass was popular in the um, gasser uh, hot rods. And then you got your clear glass, and then there's your regular Model T glass with the split windshield and the headlights and everything. Now the other thing they give you are these. So you've got a cat from AMT peel-off decal that you can stick on your real car. And then the very cool decal sheet. Yeah, I call them a decal. Not a decal, but a decal. Deck you in the face all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, so when you get these on your car, there's your, for your gasser, with your red windows, a whole bunch of pinstriping and these cool kind of flames. Then you get some of these like speed shop with the bull head and that sort of thing and the little amt logo oh and goatee license plate look at this the guy with the goatee some of the old moon eyes uh logos and stuff and then well of course you get a flyer more stuff from round two that a lot of it's discontinued now because this is from 2010. Then you get this neat postcard. You can mount that on your wall, put it in a frame, tells you about the Model T at the back. Yeah, which you guys could yeah, just give you a minute to read it. Okay, good enough. You can pause it there, right? Eh? And then they give you a mini box. So, I don't know if I want to do this, but you could actually cut this mini box out and fold it up like a real AMT box, and it would be, well, that big. Or you could actually scan this into your computer if you don't want to cut up the original, which probably would be better. Print it off on hard stock, and then cut that one out and glue it together. And you can have this little box to display with your kit. These little box is almost the same size as the kit. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I'll just zoom up on this. So this is a model kit worth checking out. Um, you'll have to do eBay again on it because it's discontinued. I don't think it exists in the back thing, but don't worry about it too much because the Three Stooges Model T that's coming out has enough to build this as well as the pickup truck and the tall T. So look forward for that new version of it, and we'll talk to you soon.